The amazing success of V8 circuit car racing in this country owes a hell of a lot to those series, and in particular those people that came before it. The heady days of Group A touring car racing in the 70s and 80s introduced us to some amazing cars, but some equally amazing characters. Characters like the Anderson brothers, a couple of sawmilling brothers from Whanuapai who with their Pine Pack racing team took on the best of Australasia with their Falcons and Mustangs and then later moved into GT racing with some fire-breathing classic American cars. Fortunately for us, Bruce Anderson has held on to a piece of that history. His trademark yellow 69 Mustang, in which he entertained crowds all around the country in Super GT racing. This car has recently undergone a full restoration and we were fortunate enough to be at the track when it had its first shakedown run and catch up with Bruce about the old days. Well, it's one of those cars that uh, came out of the States just as a road car. Uh, we imported it around 1990. Uh, Pine Pack Racing was, was in its heyday uh, at that time. So we brought it into our shop in 1990 and uh, turned it into a race car. It's not a genuine boss. Um, it is a, one of those replicas, there's no question about that. But uh, we're fortunate with the 69 Mustang that there was a variety of engines, anything from six cylinders right through to the big, uh, big block uh, aluminium motors. So uh, you could put pretty much any old motor in there, and, uh, and we, we have over the years, but mostly we've stuck with, with 351. Seems to be pretty well balanced at that. Um, the last rebuild we've done on the car, we just, we just gave it a few more cubic inches, but it's still in 351 configuration, basically. Uh, so that car's 40 years old. And um, of course, like any, any uh, classic car, you can restore them a number of times. And uh, this car's on its second restoration in race trim. And, um, and so that's why we've got it looking pretty sharp at the moment. My brother Wayne and I started racing um, seriously with a, an XD Falcon. And and uh, then moved on to XEs and then into a couple of Group A Mustangs. But going back before that, my club circuit days here at Pukekohe um, were in uh, the old Mark IV Zephyrs and uh, six-cylinder Falcons. Uh, yeah, had a lot of fun in those. Did the enduro races as they were in those days. Uh, Will six hours, Benson Hedges eight hours. Um, yeah, had a terrific amount of fun. Johnson has accepted an invitation from the Anderson brothers of Fenuapai to drive their Ford Falcon, which has been recording impressive lap times recently. Johnson, who has a Bathurst win to his credit, was forced out of the recent James Hardy 1000 race in Australia by mechanical failure. Dick Johnson at Bathurst just a few weeks ago. A real estate developer from Brisbane who now does more motor racing than real estate developing, Johnson is one of the more colourful characters on the Australian track. The Falcon gave out before the end of the race, but Johnson's faith in Fords is immovable and he's here to drive the local one. It's the car owned by Bruce and Wayne Anderson of Fenuapai, which last Sunday was briefly leading at Bay Park. The Johnsons, the Brocks, uh, those were the people, the Moffats uh, in, in Ford, um, they were the ones that I certainly looked up to and admired. Um, some of the people may remember that uh, we had Dick Johnson over here in the 80s. Um, I, I had him co-drive with me at Wellington and that was just a neat experience. Met up with him again uh, at Hamilton just last weekend and, and still the same guy, lovely bloke. And um, so some lovely experiences there. But uh, look, I think the guys uh, of the age group, I think I think this is the, the old Generation X, Generation Y thing. And, um, and there's other generations they start talking about now. I, I think the young young people of today do look up to those uh, wind cups and others um, because they're the people they know and so it's it's really the area that you live in. Um, I, I respect these young fellas abil ability enormously um, but I suppose the, the smell of the petrol, the smell of the rubber, the, the, the howl of the V8s at Bathurst or, or anywhere else we saw them, that was the stuff that, that made my memories. That's the stuff that I think that when people come to see these classic events they recognise that and that's what they really get uh, a thrill out of. Today's pretty special, uh, you know, I've had a chance to, to, to have the 69 car out again and uh, yeah, pretty special to get out there and uh, I know my son likes to, to rub it into me that I'm getting a bit slow but you know, we got down to the 62s today without much effort and you know, there's a bit more to come. Went to Bathurst in 85 and 86 uh, with those GT Mustangs, had a lot of fun with that. Did Surface Paradise uh, on, its, on its last official meeting, um, so yeah, that, there's some milestones there. Went back to Eastern, well not so much back to Eastern Creek, but back to Australia just a, a year or two back and, um, and was able to drive those classic Mustangs at, at the classic meeting there at Eastern Creek. So 
they're special moments when you can do that. I think the really special thing is that the, the cars that the boys run in that uh, Central Series, uh, even today's youth seems to recognise them, and I suppose that's thanks to television and, and various uh, films that have been uh, put together over the years. Uh, you, you look at a Mustang or you look at a Camaro and you, you say, man, that's a, that's a real car. And, and I think that's what draws people back. Um, uh, on top of that, we can turn out some noise and we can turn out some pretty good lap times. So uh, it's, it's all pretty special to be able to have it still running, as I say, 40 years after these cars were built. It's a different era, and I think to be right at the sharp end of things, uh, yes, you do need to be super fit, uh, sharp of mind, sharp of, of, of body, if you like, and, um, and that's the standard that they run to. Um, there's, there's no question that uh, people like myself who hop back into these cars that the young fellows run today, we're always a little off the pace despite the experience. So uh, it's, it's the sharp edge, the sharp end of, of motorsport when you're, when you're competing there. I always dreamed of getting a, a saloon car around here and under 60 seconds and, and unfortunately I haven't quite managed it. Um, 61, low 61s are about it. I, I hope to do that uh, that under 60 seconds today with the Mustangs but uh, ha having said that uh, there's a lot of people who like to go for rides in these things so I've usually got a passenger with me. We've stuck with 351 Cleveland uh, configuration. Nowadays uh, we have uh, got an aluminium uh, Ford Motorsport aluminium block in it. Bit of nostalgia for the, for the petrol heads. I've still got cast iron heads on it. Now that's pretty unique. We spent a lot of time getting cast iron heads to go as well as aluminium high ports and uh, we succeeded and I'm hanging on to those heads for dear life. So, so that's something special. We're looking at about 670 horsepower uh, out of the motor. Uh, you're talking about 600 horsepower at the wheels. It'll spin the wheels as they say in pretty much any old gear and yeah you have to watch what you're doing. It's uh, quite a heavy car. Uh, we, we're just a bit over 1,500 kilos, um, and that's about 100 kilos heavier than a touring car. It's got six-spot Woolwood calipers on the front and just four spots on the rear. It hauls up well. While I'm not brave enough to go into 120 or 140 metres, I think it would go there with the right driver. The gearbox, we, we stuck with the top loader for a long while, um, but um, they're getting harder and harder to come by. But we're still just four speed. Nine inch Ford diff, of course, that's, uh, that's pretty much the kit for, for any car. It doesn't matter whether you drive a Holden or a Ford, you, you put a nine inch in it. Um, tires, currently, the, the set of tires I got on today, uh, they're actually straight off a, an Australian V8 supercar. If you have a look at the label on them, they're marked V8, especially for that series. So no concession in that department and um, that does keep the car on the track. I, I think I probably will come back and have a go with the probably the Central Muscle Car guys or, or possibly the Classics. Uh, there's some pretty interesting Classic meetings coming up uh, around uh, January, February of, of 2010. Um, I've had an invitation along to that uh, to bring this car back out and um, that's more than likely where it'll be seen first. It's nice to look at but it's an even nicer car to drive and uh, it's, it's a lively car to drive. I think there'd be some people uh, who, who have driven race cars that would hop into this vehicle and find it a little difficult and that's because it moves around the track. It's still got leaf springs on the back. Now that's, that's one of the concessions I was never prepared to make. I was never prepared to put coil springs in the rear of it because, I mean, to keep it in its era, it was always leaf springs. So you, you can imagine what they're like coming up over the top of the hill here. It's, um, it's, pretty, it's pretty interesting. An understatement to say the least. And I'm sure that with the front suspension issues that were discovered after this day sorted out, those sub 60 second laps will be there soon. And just to show you how much things have changed, check out these old shots of Pukekohe. I'm sure those picket fences will stop away with Falcon in the wet. Bruce and Wayne Anderson, thanks for your time and thanks for your contribution to New Zealand V8 racing. I can still remember sitting in the stand at Pukekohe in 86 as an 11 year old, wanting to be a V8 race driver. And a big thanks to Smith's Group, suppliers of leading automotive brands. I gotta say, I can't get enough of watching that old V8 circuit racing stuff. If there's something you'd like to see more of, get onto v8.co.nz and talk to us.